नमस्कार वेलकम टू वॉट डज दिस डेटा से वंस अगेन आई एम अजय प्रकाश नाउ बिफोर आई स्टार्ट दिस एपिसोड जस्ट अ क्विक रिमाइंडर दैट प्लीज सब्सक्राइब टू आर चैनल ऑन विच एवर चैनल यू आर वॉचिंग इट इट इज अ बिग हेल्प टू ऑल ऑफ अस इन टूडेज एपिसोड आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट अ वेरी डिस्टर्बिंग ट्रेंड इट्स अ ट्रेंड इट्स नॉट दैट ऑल ऑफ यू आर नॉट अवेयर ऑफ इट that how goons all across the world are able to take over the social media create a perception and then silence the voices of the civil society i'm making a reference here to the violence which took place in the city of leicester in the united kingdom in late august this year and continued till mid september this happened after the cricket match when india won that match and then groups of hindus and muslims took to the streets of leicester and created a law and order situation now this incident may not be all that important such incidents have happened in the past and will keep happening what i am going to bring out is how social media is being used by the undesirable elements to create a perception and silence the saner voices Leicester is a small town in the British Midlands area it's about 2 hours drive from London when you go northwards towards Sheffield Leicester is close to Birmingham as well where there is a large asian community of indians and pakistanis who have been staying there from right from the 60s onward between 2011 and 2021 the population in leicester has increased by 11.8% from around 329000 in 2011 to 368000 in 2021 this is far far higher than the overall increase for england area which is only about 6.6% the dark shades of orange that are those areas where the population of england has been increasing due to the influx of migrants from other countries and their thereby increasing the growth rate of population in these areas this graph from world population review clearly shows how fast the population of leicester has been increasing after the year 2000 in 2022 the population of greater leicester area and that around 561000 the religion demographics of leicester shows that christianity is followed by 32.4% of the people at second place is muslims followed by 18.6 and at third place are the hindus at 15.2 but growing at a very rapid pace with each passing year the other religion are small six at 4.4 Buddhists at 0.4, Jews at 0.1, and there is a significant population, almost 22.8 percent, who says that they do not have any religion. So Leicester has been a small in- town in England with a multicultural, multiracial community, mostly law-abiding and peace-loving citizens, till this recent incident happened, and. why are hindus increasing in that city at a rapid pace let's have a look this table from wikipedia shows the most common languages spoken in the city of leicester the first place of course is english spoken by 72.4 but the second place is surprising it's gujarati which is spoken by almost 11.5% of the people now this gives you a clue of from which part of india are people migrating into leicester as the world population review graph shows after the year 2010 this influx has increased suddenly now why is that the reason is quite simple people from our union territory of daman and diu whoever had could claim their portuguese passports they did so and then they did not go to portugal they landed up in britain because britain was part of the european union and anyone holding a european passport could live and work there so there were these thousands of people from the daman and diu area 
who were Gujarati speaking, who probably had some relatives already staying there, started going to Leicester. And that's how the influx of Indians started into this city. Leicester has seen an influx of new migrants from India, many from Daman and Dew, and Leicester has its own new generation of youngsters not inclined to be quite as calm as those a generation earlier. This I am quoting a article from News 18 written by Sanjay Suri. The same article goes on and says, the new narrative has shown a newly aggressive face of Hindu youngsters. Much of British media has blamed Narendra Modi inspired Hindutva for this. Many of the youth see themselves as finally standing up to aggression from local Muslim. Whichever way you look at it, much of that depends on who is doing the looking. Leicester has witnessed a level of aggression from Hindu youth that the Hindu community had not earlier been known for. After the violent incidents in September, the local and the western press carried out anti-India headlines. New York Times said, tensions that roiled in the English city have roots in India. How Hindu-Muslim tensions in Leicester were fanned by fake news from India. Scroll dot in, Leicester's communal violence reverberates across continents, financial times and Leicester disorder fear lingers among cities, Muslims and Hindus, BBC News. So the narrative in the British press started blaming the Hindus who had migrated recently from India being the root cause as they were influenced by the Hindutva and the RSS ideology. Now this kind of narrative in the western press is definitely not acceptable to India. More so, this narrative maligns the image of not only our country but also that of our global leader Sri Narendra Modi and also that of RSS. So this kind of thing had to be countered and countered very effectively. But then I am not a big fan of the Modi government when it comes to countering any narrative outside the country. Whoever makes such decisions or drives these decisions lacks the basic understanding of how things operate outside the country. They think it's an extension of India and as they do within the country, they start acting in the same way. The first wrong step was taken by the High Commissioner of India in the United Kingdom. They brought out a press release on September 19th stating, we strongly condemn the violence perpetrated against the Indian community in Leicester and vandalization of premises and symbols of Hindu religion. We have strongly taken up this matter with UK authorities and have sought immediate action against those involved in these attacks. We call on the authorities to provide protection to the affected people. Now I will come to part 2 of this episode. Around the same time on number 6, a young British lady by the name of Charlotte Littlewood started giving interviews on our mainstream news channels. So who is this lady Charlotte Littlewood who sitting in England is giving clean chits to the entire BJP Hindutva Brigade and RSS in India. By the way, you can see all her interviews on YouTube. I will leave the links below in the description. Her Twitter profile says she is a Henry Jackson Research Fellow, that means she is doing her PhD. She was founding director of BTV CIC. I tried searching for this. So far, I have not been able to get any details. And she is a former counter extremism coordinator for the UK government. Further, her profile says she is a PhD candidate in Arab and Islamic studies with the University of Exeter. Her research focuses on minority within Muslim minorities, that is conflict in the UK, in particular the persecution of Ahmadiyya Muslim community. Nowhere her profile says that she is an expert on Indian politics or the Hindutva or the RSS ideology. In fact, if you look at her LinkedIn profile, 
you will see some very interesting conversation with a bunch of Indians who have been trying to ask her that how she was able to make this report. Now, how many times in the past have you seen a foreign research scholar making a counter narrative for the Indian government sitting in a foreign country and not even qualified to do so and then appearing on prime time on our news channels and giving interviews and verdicts. Probably never. So it is quite evident that this effort has been driven by someone. Someone who is sitting in India and wants this narrative to come out and then tells our news channels to go and interview the lady. Her report titled Hindu Muslim Civil Unrest in Leicester, Hindutva and the Creation of a False Narrative. It was published on 3rd November in an obscure journal called Henry Jackson Society. Now, that society might be well known in the West, but definitely in India, no one has heard about it. Least so our news channels. I'm sure they would never be keeping a track of what is published in SJS and then go and start interviewing those people. A brief about Henry Jackson Society too. The Henry Jackson Society is a transatlantic foreign policy and national security think tank based in the UK. While describing itself as non-partisan, its outlook has been described variously as neoliberal and neoconservative. The society is also known for its reports related to Islamic and far-right extremism. The society is named after the American politician Henry M. Jackson. The society barely has half a dozen people who are the members and it gets funding from a variety of sources to, and publishes articles on these kind of policies. The Henry Jackson Society in names its activities as project. I am going to read out very quickly three of its projects. The first one is Center on Radicalization and Terrorism. It focuses on threat to the UK and elsewhere by Islamist terrorism. Second is Student Rights, created in 2009 as a reaction to increasing political extremism and marginalization of vulnerable students on campus. And third one is Center for Social and Political Risk, which was formed in 2018. And the society announced the creation of this center, which identify, diagnose, and propose solution to threats to gov governance in liberal Western democracies. So this is the society which is sponsoring the PhD work of Charlotte Littlewood. Whenever such an incident happened, it's very difficult to get to know what exactly happened till the government or the police comes out with its report. While doing my research on Twitter, I came across Sunny Hundal, who is a journalist, commentator, ex-independent, former columnist at Guardian, Hindustan Times and Independent. He is one person I found who is trying to make sense of it and has very balanced views about the incident. In one of his Twitter threads, he was trying to analyze the Twitter data from the September incident and he referred to a tweet from one other person. After number six, some of the tweets which have been referenced by Sunny Hundal have been taken down by Twitter. I was lucky enough to copy those tweets before they were taken down. But I am not going to show them here as since Twitter has taken it down, I won't be able to reference that material. Secondly, the tweets put out by this person who has been analyzing the Twitter data, he himself was a party to this incident. So the verification or the authenticity of the data is rather unknown. So the unverified claims by this person were that the Twitter traffic from India between 15 September and 21st September increased by a huge amount. Almost 7 lakh tweets went through with hashtags which were like Hindus under attack. There are again unverified claims that many of these tweets were coming from bots within India. 
and this is how the local press picked up the stories that people from India, from the Hindutva Brigade and the RSS were influencing the incident in Leicester. As a result of the backlash from the Hindu community in Leicester, the mayor, Peter Salisbury, had decided to conduct an independent review. For this purpose, he appointed Professor Chris Allen to head this review committee. But even this was not acceptable to the Hindu community and they called him a prejudiced professor. On November 9th, this review was suspended because Dr. Chris Allen resigned from this committee only a few days after he was appointed. The reason given was the political and community fallout in Leicester that involved local councillors as well as social media pylon targeting to Dr. Allen. You can see details about Dr. Allen on the University of Leicester's website. In his bio data, he mentions that for two decades, I have researched hate extremism and policies designed to counter them. This has included research into the victims of street level Islamophobia and the ideologies of the British far right, the prevent strategies, trends in hate crime and various associated issues. Since he was doing research on Islamophobia in Britain, that was not acceptable to the Hindu groups. And it's also quite surprising how a small community of British Indians are able to drive this agenda sitting in Leicester. So that's all for today's episode. I'll see you again next week with some more interesting data. Till then, goodbye and Namaskar. Mm -hmm.